Hello guys, this is Elena from We Learn to Share. In this video, we're going to solve the second question from the 2016 AP Statistics exam. So now, well, let's read the question. Swedish researchers investigated the relationship between chocolate consumption and stroke. The researchers gave a questionnaire about eating habits to a randomly selected sample of Swedish men. Based on the responses to the questionnaire, the men were classified into two groups. Group A consisted of the 9,250 men who ate the most chocolate per week, and group B consisted of the 9,215 men who ate the least chocolate per week. The researchers tracked the men's health for 10 years. During that time, there, there were 458 cases of stroke among the men in Group A and 500, 400, 543 cases of stroke among the men in Group B. Now, the first question, do the data provide convincing statistical evidence that Swedish men who would be classified into Group A have a lower possibility of stroke, probability of stroke than Swedish men who would be classified into Group B? Now, you need to conduct a hypothesis test, right? And for you to do that, there are several steps. Let's start with the first step. So you need to actually state a correct pair of hypotheses, right? Let's say the PA represents the probability of stroke during the 10 years of study for population of Swedish men in group A. And let's say that PB represents probability Okay, let's say it's the same, you write the same thing in group B. Then what would be your null hypothesis? Always you need to have the equal sign, so it should be PA equals PB, right? And then your alternative hypothesis would be because it asks you whether if the men in group A have a lower possibility, probability of stroke, you would say that PA is smaller than PB. This, or equivalently, you can say that no hypothesis is PA minus PB equals zero. So you move this into here. Or same like this. Either one is fine. Now, then we need to actually identify a correct test procedure like by name or by formula and then check the appropriate conditions for it. Um, so the appropriate test for this question would be a two sample, because we have group A and B, right? Sample. Z test for comparing proportions. And for to conduct this test, we need to check the conditions, right? So the first condition would be if they're randomly sampled. And we said that it is randomly selected sample of Swedish men. So this is checked. Second is whether if the sample sizes are large relative to the proportion involved. And we can see that this is also satisfied because all sample counts are larger than the like the standard structures such as five and ten. Like there were four hundred and fifty eight cases with strokes and okay, I was I write that of strokes and this much case without strokes. Okay, in group A, and this much cases with strokes, and this much cases without strokes in group B. So the sample sizes are large relative to the proportion involved. Now, another condition should be checked, right? Whether if the population sizes are larger, like 10 or 20 times than the sample sizes. And this is also checked. So now we're gonna actually conduct the test right including the value like getting the value of test statistic and the p-value so the sample proportions who have strokes would be pa which would be we have we have um this much out of this much men here right so we have this over this which is equal to 0 0.095 for this, it would be, this is a three, right? Because we see this much cases out of this much men. Go 0 
H7. And then we need to calculate the combined proportion. So it's where you add all of the uh, men. So you have both this much men and this many men here. So you'll add these two and also add these two. Which will be equal to 0 0.0541. And then you will need to get the test statistic. Right? Z. And remember that in this case, Z is equal to um, P hat A minus P hat B over root P combined. Yes, here. 1 minus P combined and then this, right? So you'll put that together. We had this for P hat A, this for P hat B, this for P hat C, zero point, and then the number of men. And if we calculate this, this would be minus 2.77, all right? And then you need to get the p-value by using your calculator. So it would be this, which will equal 0 0.003, where z has a standard normal distribution. And for your last part, you need to state a correct conclusion in the context of the study using the results of this p-value. You will say that because the p-value is very small, like it's this, so it's like really less than 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the data provide convincing statistical evidence that Swedish men who would be classified into group A have a lower probability of stroke. Then, okay, running out, out of space. Then the Swedish men like would be classified in group B. Okay, this will be our conclusion. Now the next question. A reporter in newspaper concluded that Swedish men can reduce their probability of stroke by eating more chocolate. Based on the description of the investigation, was the conclusion appropriate? Justify your answer. Well, this could be kind of tricky, but the answer to this question would be the conclusion in the report is not appropriate. It's inappropriate. Why is this? It's because the report implied that um, like eating more chocolate, okay, eating more chocolate Is running would cause okay this is important you need to say it would cause the probability of having a stroke to decrease right but the results right that we got over here were based on Based on what? We're based on observational study. Yes, we can see that it actually like tracked them in. 
where is it like check the men's health for 10 years so it's it's more of a observational study right it's not a randomized experiment so therefore a cause and effect relationship or a cause and effect conclusion is not justified justified okay so this is the end of the video thanks for watching and please press the like button subscribe to our channel